All right, so hey, y'all doing, boys? Hope you're doing well now in today's video. Finally, getting to try out to trade Meliodas alongside the brand new Demon Lord Rimuru. Now, I'm super excited to try out this team. I recently used the Demon Lord Rimuru alongside the PS team, obviously using the OG Lilia. But instead of using Trader Melia, I used the blue Demon Meliodas. Now, a lot of you guys question that. I just find it fun to use some of these older units. And I mean, it's not too often you get to use them. I think one of the last times I would have used Blue Demon Melia would have probably been when King released alongside the PS team. And even then, I probably prefer to use Omega Rugal in that state. But I mean, Melia is going to do absolutely amazing. Of course, he has the PS AoE. Pretty much the same one as the Blue Demon Melia, but a whole lot better stop stats and a whole lot better character. But jumping over to the Rimuru here, if you don't know what they do. The first card here inflicts pierce damage equal to 500% of attack on one enemy. Second card inflicts damage equal to 280% of attack on all enemies and infects for two turns. The ultimate which we have 4-6 inflicts damage equal to 390% of attack on all enemies, gains abyss effect and takes 50% less damage for two turns. The passive at the start of allies turn increases the hero's basic stats by 8% removes one buff or buffs from all enemies, then increases the hero's own basic stats by 8% for each removed buff. If increased to max, the increases the hero's pierce rate once by 130% for three turns. And last but not least, the Holy Relic increases the hero's pierce rate by 80%. I mean, been using this Demon Lord Rimuru a whole lot as of recent, and been having an absolute blast using them. Jumping over to the equipment here, we are using the attack crit set. And looking at the cosmetics, a little bit of investment always, try to stick away from actually upgrading the SSR pieces since it is just so much more materials to actually go ahead and do so I should probably go ahead and quickly put some gear on the melee as well this video was actually recorded well quite a while ago but I for some reason cannot find the file where I actually do this intro so recording it for a second time and let's jump right into it here we go first opponent ADN melee team and I mean, this is going to be a pretty offensive team, especially since we have the healing card. I feel like it should synergize pretty well. Let's see if we can get rid of Melee right off the bat. Go for the double single target. Actually, uh, should I infect first? Just for just for the chance of potentially proccing uh, a dodge food. We'll always go for that first. I mean, look, even just at level one, that card tears through teams. Not even going to get to use the Melee single target on Melee. I feel like if this goes for Esco, he's just dead. Yeah, look at that. My oh my. We haven't even had to use any heal cards. We haven't had to utilize the stun as of yet. I mean, I'm sure we'll get to throughout the video, but man, you can see what putting these two together, especially if there was like a Ludo or something in the middle, the kill power is just so, so strong. Literally to the point where most of the teams you use them with, you just run two other supports with them because they do more than enough damage by themselves. Great that we're still drawing so many heal cards, although we have two DPSs. I uh, would have liked another stun card. That would have been great, but hoping this might kill. We'll have to see though. Time Mill Grace on this new DM would kill us right here. We'll see the HP coming after. Yeah. Ouch, 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 ouch. Really hoping they bring back that Time Mule. Allows us to vote maybe for the Time Mule for the year three banner. Because, I mean, we might have the same situation where a whole bunch of people would vote counter melee. But fingers crossed we could get Time Mule on that banner along with the Festival DM. Because two characters I really need dupes in. Can we take the DM ultimate? Moment of truth. If it's a 6 6 DM, we kind of just lose here. It's the only unfortunate part. I mean,. We're still alive. How much How much healing are we going to get from that there? Looks like killing the Rimuru by the looks of it. Yeah. That's okay. We can we can lose Rimuru. We have a stun as well here, so... Let's see. We... Yeah, I reckon we go for the heal. Does the Holy Relic make it so the Pierce is... Let's have another read. Yeah, okay, sweet. So that applies for anyone. Let's go one... I think I might double single target. We'll go two and three. This is, the end. this is the moment of truth where we actually get to see if the stun will remove Dian's taunt or if she'll just help keep that up. Really cool animations as well for Shuna. Really enjoying that character. Okay, so yeah, it does drop it almost accidentally killing Bun. I was meant to go for Dian there. Having this melee ultimate though should allow us to kill. Man, really hoping we come up against some Kyo teams in today's video because being able to spam that heal card and make melee just completely go off the Rimuru as well with that single target card. They could both go crazy. Let's see. Uh... Yeah, we'll just go for something like this. That should finish it off. Melee's only 4-6, unfortunately, so I doubt he'll come back anytime soon, but hey, should still want that. And of course, if you guys have any team suggestions, by all means, let me know in the comments section down below. This is what I mean when using Trader Melee, that using a unit that can tank for them and just like, I would call this Merlin a support type unit. Do we want to... Who do we want to kill? Like, killing anyone here is super valuable because if we kill Melee, it kind of kills off all the damage you can do. If we kill Deanne, it allows us to get to those other units instantly, but if we kill Merlin, it stops the attack disabled from coming out, which is also really important. 
A little unfortunate we have to use the attack card, but getting that second proc of the melee passive, the extra defense, is also really, really nice. And Barn coming to the front. I feel like I've been seeing a lot of Barn backlines, which is weird because he doesn't do a whole lot for your team in the front, but I understand, especially if you have Holy Relic, he's coming to the front with an instant proc of that Holy Relic, so still really good, and he has amazing CC if you're going to use him with attack rolls. Personally, if you're using him in the front, I'd say use crit chance and crit damage, but hey, maybe that's just me. Actually, I didn't even think either. We can cleanse the attack disable. Oh man, this is... <laughs> that just made this team so much stronger and I didn't even realize. We'll go one... Actually, is that... Okay, so I didn't tell you. I believe it cleanses the... Actually, I'm like 90% sure it cleanses the card or the debuff, sorry, to the right. So let's go for that there. I don't think I targeted DN either, which is my bad. Okay, yeah, no, maybe I did. No crits on DN. Can we finish off with the melee? It's a two-star. Man, still loving this melee costume. The sports costumes they made for both Deanna and Melee look so, so nice. Melon's still alive, but once again, we have another cleanse card and we can just start stunting. Oh, look at that. Two turns stun. We can just completely stop Barn. Even if he has his gift effect up, we can just put the effects in fetch. So he'll just be completely useless at that point. Man, this could this potentially be a new favorite team? I've been absolutely loving the Ludosil OG Arthur team for quite a while now. One, uh, we'll go stun first. That way we get the extra buff and then we'll go for that there. Man, that Rimuru is still so impressive. I'm going to be enjoying using this Rimuru for ages now. That animation for Shuna as well, so good. And man, the costume. She definitely got the best costume out of all the slime characters. And surprisingly, even though Rimuru is green, we have both Rimuru and Meliodas, so you can just completely tear apart Barnes. So that is most of the troubles some teams come by. You can do really good in most matchups, but the second you get to that Barn team, it can just, some units just can't kill and get through that HP pool. Combined with the Arthur Taunt, it is so hard to kill Arthur when he has that Nameless Dance torn up. It is, it can be impossible at some points. Rimuru tanking Eskinor fairly well, although we know this melee single target's coming out and we still hold it. What is that noise? Can you guys hear that as well? Is that Rimuru taking damage? That is so weird if it is. And let's see, we can, we can once again kill melee here. I might go for double Rimuru. Hopefully that can get Rimuru straight back to full HP. Not too much damage on that one, but I start to go ham. Are there any other units I can... I mean, I would like to have a buff removal unit in the team. Well, really not killing melee. That is one. That's one tanky boy. Although he does have the infect up, so even if he kills off Rimuru or someone in this turn, we don't have to worry about him a crazy amount. We can, we can throw off one of these melee AoEs and he'll be dead. Our melee is still at full HP. It's like... You're focusing so hard on killing Rimuru because they're just as powerful, but the second you kill Rimuru, look, Amelie's pretty much going to be two stacks in, like, or two stacks of his defense proc and four stacks of his first half, the passive, the blue buffs. I mean, he's actually pretty close to dead as well. Although, yeah, we can pretty much one of these AoEs and he's going to go straight back to full HP. Let's go attack the Eskinor first for an extra buff, but after that, can I... I might go for this here instead. Does this just wipe the field? We'll get the Meliodas ultimate as well for the, the final opponent. Eskinor holding up fairly well. Maybe HP defense, Eskinor? Because that was impressive. And here it is, the finale. Our PS card. Wiping everyone. Easy 300,000 off a one-star card. The just seeing this game progress and the fact that we can have units just do stuff like that off level one cards with... I mean, these aren't like super strong buffs, the basic stats buff, but man, it is wild to think units can do stuff like that now. And we can we can bully this goddess Liz to finish it off. Oh no, we're getting stunned. <laughs> Actually, wait, we don't even have to worry about the stun because we have a unit that has cleanse that. This Shuna having cleanse is such a game changer. We'll go for that one there. The extra pierce as well. The fact that Melee has pierces. Man, could this could this potentially be the new best team? So I can see it dealing with a lot of other really good matchups. And we get the forfeit. At this point, man, are we really scared of any teams? This is pretty much the only other team in the game that has cleanse. I think we might go for Sariel first, because that Holy Relic, we know they have the Holy Relic. I mean, has Holy Relic on Tarmiel? What's Tarmiel's Holy Relic, the OG one? Decreased all allies, damage taken by 20%, win in a stance, and increases damage dealt, but I'm not super worried about you, but you definitely will go for that there. Hopefully proc an evasion food. I mean, yeah, he was also buffing the Sariel a whole lot by having that. Didn't fall for the evasion food for once, let's go. And then please kill. Type neutral with that damage, crazy, but I know melee can be a little lackluster if he hasn't got any buffs. And there we see, I mean, at least we're guaranteed we can kill him. He can get a little bit of lifesteal from his cleave card. That card is very, very powerful. One of the only units in the game that has that cleave effect as well. Uh, believe cleave units, it's the both the single target cards from Kusak and Zeldris. 
that Sariel's AoE and then Melee's ultimate, the traitor Melee, but getting that. Ooh, am I gonna am I regretting not going for the kill on Tamiel? Let's say this. Moment of truth, I definitely should have just stunned Tamiel. Actually, Tamiel. Yeah, no, Tamiel can't have Luda. I definitely should have stunned Tamiel. Ouch, 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 ouch. The Pierce card could potentially kill here because we are getting a lot of damage off on Margaret, please. Oh yeah, look at that. We big brain, I'm telling you. Massive, huge brain. And we get the fall, but I know it. As you could tell, did not have a single doubt in my mind, and a King Ludo team to finish it off. Getting out CC'd though. If we can survive this first turn, we win, but otherwise we're pretty much lost. And you got the merger on King, yeah, and no, I think I think we just lose this out the gate. Damn, almost went flawless as well. Um, actually, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say we've lost it yet. We've still got quite a bit of HP on most of our characters. Man, power strike AOE though. We still have Rimuru. Okay, we still have Rimuru. I would have liked a debuff so we could have got an extra Pierce stack. Hmm. Hold on. Let's let's go one, two, and three. That should life still remove back to full as well, shouldn't it? That won't. I'm hoping this can break the shields on the other two as well. Not that it really means an awful lot, but we can definitely get the kill on King. Would have been nice to just get a little bit of life steal from Ludo on the go through as well. That removes the shield. Actually, I definitely should have used the infect at the end. I completely forgot about the fact that once you kill King, his passive is no longer there. Trader Melee coming to the front. We have our ultimate. Could you please put pumpkin bombs on us? Hopefully he's drawn no melee cards. Please put pumpkin bombs, because I have no good cards to use. I don't think he did. I think he went full send on Ludo. He's trying to kill Shuna as well. Ouch, please defend. Surely you don't have another single target card. Oh, look at that, but still, still no heal. Do we have to cleanse a debuff? I'm sure we do, but just going to check. Do we have to cleanse a debuff? When hero uses and removes one debuff, then applies an effect. Ouch, I'm going to use the heal card regardless here. Yeah, why not? And we'll use the Dissolve kind of card from Balm. Oh no, so we still get the extra piss. Okay, damn. Maybe I just read that wrong. Yeah, that's my bad. Abyss ultimate coming in here. I feel like we can actually kill Ludo. Can we kill Ludo? Maybe I should have used the Balm charge card. Let's see, that will proc twice as well. And we have the 50%. Oh, we just kill right out the gate. There we go, and that just about does it for today's video. Oh my, is that impressive. Like, not only did that ultimate basically one tap, because you know, we did the effect and then it one-tapped right after, but we get 50% less damage for the next two turns. That is absolutely insane. Honestly, could be a contender for best team in the game, especially with that cleanse and stun. Just cancels out so many bad matchups, but that just about does it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please hit the like button, subscribe. Really means a lot to me, and I'll see you guys for some more Grand Cross content.